Hey, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Biting Dozen. Greetings from beautiful Liberty County, Florida. Uh, and uh, up here in the Florida Panhandle, nice. Okay, they got a lot of nice adult bookstores along the freeway and a lot of nice Jesus Freak shops as well. Okay, they got the, you know, all kinds of different things, whatever you're into. Anyway, we've got uh, three different species of pine right here. We got the uh, sand pine, Pinus clausa. Uh, we got uh, loblolly in the back right there. Can you see that? That kind of, the one with all the cones on it. And then we got a pine, long leaf pine, Pinus palustris, right there with the long needles and the uh, larger cones. But uh, the pine dungeon is not what I wanted to show you today. really wanted to show you this incredible lupin, one of about, I don't know, eight species uh, in the genus here in Florida. This is Lupinus velosus, and you can see this thing is just showy as hell. You could see those little bean fruits just covered in a fuzz, okay? Thus the species name, velosus. But more importantly, look at those flowers. Look at those wild ass flowers. God damn. And unlike many of the lupins, which have palmate leaves, especially out west, lupin, lupinus is a really big genus, Western North America. You also get a couple species in, uh, in the Andes down there in South America as well. It doesn't have triffid leaves, okay? It's just got simple leaves. And they're, they're God, they're like, they're, you know, they're like mullen almost, okay? Could use them as toilet paper, but we would never do that to you, would we? Because you're so damn, you're so damn fine. And look at that, look at that banner petal. All right, you got the fuzzy calyx right there in the back, all those sepals fused together forming a calyx. Remember, sepals are the calyx, petals are the corolla. And you got that banner wings and keel forming the uh, the five petals of the corolla. That banner petal though is incredible. Look at it, it's got like a blood coloration to the center of it. And then the pink wings and then the keel is uh, hidden in between those wings. Absolutely incredible species of lupin here. My mind is blown. Okay, it's a little bit past its prime. I mean, these are still going off, but to see when they're fully lit up and they can get, you know, knee high too. This, I mean, this thing really needs to be, I mean, are people growing this? I would assume they are. This is a fucking wild, that's an incredible plant. That is really nice. And of course, like many members of the pea family, it's got rhizobium bacteria fixing nitrogen in uh, this uh, relatively nitrogen poor sandy soil here uh, on this uh, sandy upland. That. There's those vestigial leaves technically not unifoliate, okay, but it's uh, you can see they're on their way out evolutionarily speaking I just can't get over how woolly that is God damn, I feel like there's something biting me. You know, I really I just pulled a tick off my scrotum No lie, all right less than 20 minutes ago. All right, I'm not traumatized anymore I've grown a little bit since my last encounter well since my scrotum's last encounter with the tick But it's still you know, it, it's still a little traumatizing look at that cladonia like it in the back so nice isn't it you could use it as like uh you know as snow for a model railroad or something how about that just kidding. i don't know where that comes from it's always what i think of once you know i've seen that once i've seen somebody do that at the little model shop they got over there in berwin is that place still around or did it get shut down i don't know here we go variations on the theme baptisia lanceolata the yellow flowered baptisia down here look with those those pea flowers just pointing up getting all pointing up erect getting all erect all right, and then look at how different the fruits are, okay? Instead of this this spike of a bunch of different fruits, you've just got a single fruit uh, right there at the end. Look at it, there's, there's the seeds right there, all right? Super easy to propagate. I wonder if they need any kind of scarification. Sometimes the members of the pea family will need like a sandpaper scarification. Rub them between two sheets of sandpaper to get them going. Look at that, though. A lot of nice members of Baptisia. God, I just want to burn all this. There's probably so many ticks in there. Oh, yeah. So now we're down on the bottom lens. Look at all the Talansi up in that tree. The Talansi used in the orange is the Spanish moss. Here we go. Amorpha fruticosa. Look at this one. Amorpha is a really great genus with a lot of different species in it. You get Amorpha canescens, the lead plant in the Midwest. Notable for having all those tiny flowers on that spike. They've only got one petal. So they're a pea family, but instead of having a banner wings and keel, like many members of a Forboidae, the the specifically the pea subfamily of the pea family basically they've only got one petal but they're indigo look at that real nice with those stamens just dumping out all those, all those anthers and stamens just dumping out amorpha fruticosa loves the soggy bottom lands all right great plant to uh, plant in a landscape if you got really wet inundated soil and of course it's got that uh, pinnate foliage oh look at the hairs in the glands you got those glands whole tribe of morphe has got those glands it smells really good ice and hardia Texana in Texas has that. Morphoconescence has that. All right. Sorrel thamnus has that. Foliage always smells really good. You got those uh, often orange glands. Jesus, what a what a what a great plant. And this this particular species of amorpha gets so big. Those leaflets on either side they're slightly offset. They're not directly opposite each other, but 
Real nice flower like that. Oh, look at that. Amorpha fruticosa. There you go. Down on the bottom lands. Look, you got a thing of chewing tobacco down there. Somebody left their chew. Oh, Christ. Look at this. Look, somebody, somebody shed out a lot of blueberries, too. Looks like a, it was a coyote. Look at that. Nice coloration on that turd. How about that? You know, we got the, we got poison ivy, of course, right there. And look at, you get the, the limestone bedrock here. But look at this steep ravine. And very obvious feral pig damage, too. That's why you got to shoot them, you know? I don't normally, uh, I don't normally eat red meat. Well, I guess it's a white meat, but, you know, mammals. But I would eat these guys, I'll tell you that. So you, so you had, this was a very rich site. There was a lot of stuff here. Yeah. And it's, the pigs just, just all. Yeah, it's decimated. So I this think. is why you need rednecks, right? This is why you need the rednecks to come out here. Especially you get them hammered, you give them guns, you have them blow the shit out of some feral pigs. For each other. I, I mean, I mean, the real nice thing is to just not have, not have feral pigs in the first place. Not have an invasive species problem. Yeah. God, I fucking hate people. Humans are the most invasive. That's not technically true. It's not the correct use of the word, jackass. That maiden hair is nice. So that adiantium. Oh. But this is nice. Looks like an elm. Same family, but different genes. Instead of being omus, it's planera. This is planera aquatica. Colloquial name, water elm. Quite a beautiful tree. You can see how large it gets right there. Well, this one's all messed up, but uh, you get the idea. Beautiful, beautiful toxicodendron radicans, poison ivy. Look at that, you got, a, you got that sycamore too. Platinus occidentalis. Beautiful bark, another water loving tree. Grows fast as hell. Look at that, Campsis radicans, Bignonia, I say Catalpa family. All right, trumpet vine, right? Growing right next to the damn, the freaking poison ivy, which I just, I can't even handle. You got Sable Miner right there in the back, nice. Got that poison ivy. And yeah, now we're in the heart of Chattahoochee, right? Alan Jackson had a song about Chattahoochee where he said it was hotter than a hoochie's coochie, which seems a little crass, okay? You know, I thought he was a Christian man. I didn't know why is he singing about nasty stuff like that, huh? Anyway, but a lot of those religious people, they got a real dirty, got some dirty stuff in their closet. Anyway, Salvia Lyrata is this guy, common as hell, basal rosetta leaves, nice salvia, one of the uh, 900 species, where is it, 800 species? How many species is that? Maybe five, I don't know. There's a lot of goddamn species of salvia, but of course, the potheads always say, you know, salvia, they, they just know the one divinorum that gets you, sends you into into a vortex for five minutes. Anyway, uh, bilaterally symmetrical flowers, of course, uh, anyway. You can see those uh, nice green calyxes. This is going to, you know, I don't have enough light to really zoom in. Look at how hairy the calyx is, too. But you do have those two stamens, see, with the, the brown anthers and a style poking out of it. Look at this. This is the banger here. We got Phlox Carolina. All right, Carolina Phlox. Look at it. All right, Polymonaceae is the family there. Long tubular flower, probably pollinated by butterflies, maybe moths to an extent, too. Very distinct calyx on it. See those those elongated, kind of spiky sepals? And then right here, Spigelia marilandica. Look at that. Loganiaceae is the family right there. Gentianales is the order. Look at that. What do you think pollinates that? Red tubular flower, probably a hummingbird. Look at those sepals down there. Almost hair-like, extremely narrow compared to those fused petals that make up that corolla. Oh, God. That thing is that showy as hell. Look at that. You got those five stamens. And then that style elongates, uh, I guess, I suppose, when they're done, maybe before. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the pollen still sticking to that thing. Holy hell, that's nice. See that? The style elongates and brings the pollen out with it, almost like an aster, like a member of the sunflower family. But this is not. Gentianales is the order. The gentian order. Namesake order of gentians. You got those... Uh, so you get those almost perfoliate leaves. They do taper, but uh, there is no petiole. There's no stalk holding those leaves. Perfectly opposite on the stem, though. Indian pink is a common name. Not only is it corny, but it's a little weird. It's a little weird of a name. All right? They're kind of a... Okay, it's, it doesn't sound too PC to me. Galls on his carrier. Look at this. This is Critagus rosaceae. It's a hawthorn. Weird leaves, huh? You know, why is Alan Jackson... I can't, still can't believe he said that. What a hoochie's coochie. What is he talking about? Well, you got to say that. You gotta say this is a family restaurant. All right, you can't do that. You get kicked out of Cracker Barrel. Look at that. You got Trillium under Woody. It's still going off, huh? Oh wait, no, not really. It's kind of finishing up. See that? See, it's ripening the fruit right there. See, you still got that. You still got the stigma, just barely attached. All right, and you got that mottling on those leaves. Melanthiaceae is the family order of Liliales, so it is related to lilies. But Melanthiaceae, you gotta watch out. Most members of that family have some pretty toxic secondary chemistry. I'm absolutely getting nailed by the mosquitoes over here, but at least we got enough light 
they get that uh, Silene. Caria phylaceae is the order. Silene, I've seen a bunch of different species. I've seen some in South Africa or all over the American West. Some very rare ones. This one's Silene catesbii. Just like Lilium catesbii. C-A-T-E-S-B-A-I. I think that's it. Anyway, you get the poison oak right there, dude. Don't touch it. You get an ass rash. We're not near the Mexican border, so you can't get the prednisone cheap. All right, it's a ripoff because the American healthcare system's fucked. I don't wonder what's pollinating that. Is it a moth? Is it a butterfly? Who's going in there? Look at that. See, and then look at the, that hairy calus. God damn, I'm getting hit by the mosquitoes. I got ticks. I got, we got chiggers. We got everything down here. It's killing me. Freaking A, man, Florida. All right, and then you, you see the tweakers at the liquor store, right? Asking if you want your freaking windshield wiped or whatever the hell they're doing over there. I don't know. You know, huffing bath salts. Just trying not to touch the Tosco Denver. Anyway, this thing is... Uh, uh, endemic to North Florida, and then it goes into Georgia a little bit too. But we're not going into Georgia, are we? No, not today. Here's a nice one: Collinsonia anisata, mint family Lamiaceae. Flower, uh, this flower raceme is not going off. Okay, I guess it's more of a pain. God, the mosquitoes are really bad. Leaves smell like basil. Leaves are opposite, just like many members of the mint family. That square stem shit is nonsense. But does this have a square stem? This one does, but not all. Not all of them do. But most members of the mint family do have opposite leaves, not necessarily square stems. But there's exceptions to every rule. Anyway, uh, you could see those calices right there. All right, they'll they'll bloom probably in another month or so. But uh, the leaves they do smell nice. Re smell really nice. Very glandular. I'm picking up the oils on my hands. Some leaves smell like basil. How about that? Of course, this being a lowland, we got Itea virginica, IDAC, which they called Virginia sweet spires. The common name. There's that spike. You could see those tiny flowers. Man, camera quality is really shit in the low light. Uh, and uh, Saxifragales is the order. Kind of a zigzag pattern on that stem too. Doesn't get taller than about waist high. And over here we got an interesting thing. You can barely see it, but it's a pretty rare plant. Here we go. A member of the U family, Taxaceae taurea. This is taurea taxifolia, all right? Functionally extinct, just like American chestnuts. They grow to a certain height, then they get uh, they get smacked by this uh, introduced fungus that was brought over on uh, conifers from Asia where the fungus is native, and of course because that fungus didn't evolve in this ecosystem and this species has no prior experience with it, uh, it, uh, it can't fight it, so it dies. All right, they, uh, they, I don't think in the wild they even grow to reproductive age, but in cultivation they can grow to reproductive age where they got it easier, you know, they don't got, uh, they get more light, they get water, they have to deal with drought, they don't have to deal with the deer rubbing up against them, etc. Those needles are very spiky. You get two species in this genus in North America, the other one's Torea californica, which as far as I know, it doesn't have any introduced fungus uh, hidden it. And uh, they call it California nutmeg. All right, conifers related to yews, okay? But uh, increasingly rare. And they all, they're all infected with that fusarium fungus. But again, the ones in cultivation can at least make it the reproductive age and they uh, produce seed. But uh, that fungus is not specific to this. So, uh, you know, just like uh, Cryphonectria parasitica, the chestnut fungus, which is not specific to chestnuts. It can also infect oaks. So the fungus persists in uh in the uh in the ecosystem it also affects other species than native conifer here but uh kind of a bummer but uh you know, I used to get a lot taller than this they used to get like 30 feet tall but these i think few of them ever make it that high anymore and then they die back and then they'll just they'll re-sprout and then they can only do that so many times before they finally crack out oh this is nice okay so Matalea is a genus of milkweed vine it's related to milkweeds but it uh, differs slightly it, uh, you know it's a climbing and the flowers differ, of course, too. So you got those chordate leaves. You can see they're kind of auriculate at the base. This is Matalea baldwiniana, all right? And it's uh, endemic to North Florida. It goes into uh, Alabama a little bit as well. It will bleed latex if I were to break it off. But I don't, I don't want to do that. Why do you want to do that? Look at those white flowers, okay? Asclepiad flowers. Oh, there's so many cool Matalea's out there. And a fruit is a follicle. All right, but this is a this is a you know again this genus has quite a few species in it just like Asclepius, the milkweed genus. Man, we are giving a lot of blood today. We're giving a whole lot of blood. I'm getting just attacked by freaking mosquitoes out here. So anyway, a rare species of Matalea, and there's quite a few in North America. Look at this. This is nice. This is a nice color of real tree right here. I, you know, I wish we'd see some copperheads, but I don't know where they are. Anyway, you get the sable miner and stuff. Anyway, we're losing light, so I'm gonna. I'm going to can it there. Hopefully you got something out of that. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.